we're going we're gonna to begin a teaching tonight. That I don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, my guess is it could, it could possibly take the whole year on Wednesday nights. Because we're going to do the life and teachings of Paul, and we're going to do we're going to go through every book he wrote. Um, we're doing it all in chronological order. We're going to do some background history on things as we're doing them, um, and uh, you know, so we're we're going to kind of do some of this background history tonight. Will be very informative. We may not even get to to, to the first letter tonight. I don't. I, we might, but um, in the process, this is going to be a learning process. I believe as we go through Paul's writings and we go through his life. We'll get an understanding of why certain things were written, uh, the setting in which they were written, and that kind of thing, and it'll help us understand him. If you read your Bible, Paul's first letter was not Romans. Now, let me, let me explain to you how the, uh, the canonical uh, or, um, or order versus the chronological order, order, order took place in the New Testament. The letters to the church are length of letter, church letters first, personal letters second. So Paul's writings are arranged in the length of the letter. So the longest letter is Romans, and then first and second Corinthians, da 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 da. All to the church, and then the four personal letters to Philemon, Titus, and Timothy are uh, after that in the same set, the longest to the shortest. Okay, so you might be reading Romans and thinking, man, Paul's writing this, and then you get down somewhere else and you're reading something else that's more whatever. The fact of the matter is the first letter Paul wrote to the church anywhere was 1 Thessalonians. So we're going to go through the chronological orders. Um, we're going to go through uh, when they took place in his life um, and what was going on, where he was. Uh, we have letters that are referred to as the prison epistles. Those are the ones he wrote from his first imprisonment. Uh, there's letters that are written post-first imprisonment. There are letters written pre-first imprisonment. There's letters written on his missionary journeys, these kind of things. And so we, we'll get, a, get a, um, a, a, uh, an idea of what Paul was doing and where he was going. So if we'll go ahead and put that PowerPoint up and get it full screen, we're going to go from here, all right? And we got, have we got the full screen thing going yet? Uh, work on it. All right. The Apostle Paul, here, here we go, here's our title. The Apostle Paul, a chronological study of his life and epistles. Hallelujah. Um, let's go ahead and with the, let's talk about Paul as a young man. Um, we know Acts, Acts chapter 8, if you will. We're going to go there first. So we won't be void of Scripture. It's just going to be that we're talking about, you know, we're, we're referring to things in Paul's life. Uh, obviously, the book of Acts is, the, is going to be part of the history. You went down? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Sure, that's all right. I understand. It's it's not a. We're we're kind of trying to work this thing out. We'll get it. We'll get the kinks worked out. We don't. I don't think it's only the third time I've used PowerPoint. So we got we got to get that kind of kinks worked out, kind of thing. So that, but I I have it on mine. So so I don't have to be concerned about reading it. Acts chapter eight. Um, if you back up just a little bit into Acts chapter seven. Uh, verse 54, when they heard these things, talking about Stephen, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Uh, and he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their, car, their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, uh, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So Stephen was martyr. He's the first martyr <coughs> of the church and died at the stunning. And verse 8, I mean, chapter 8, verse 1 says this, And Saul was consenting unto his death. Now, this, is the, the, this passage between the 7th and 8th chapters, is the first account of Saul in the Bible. And his first account that we have is that he is a, he is, he's a zealous Jew. And he hates the people that are Christians. And he's holding their coats. Now, he may not have had the, the, the vitriol hatred that we see a little, maybe uh, a little bit later, but he, he, was, he was consenting unto his death. It pleased him. And honestly, I believe something got into him at that time uh, where we find out later he's going out and persecuting the church, having letters to take them to, in the way. And he, he's, he's just going out and destroying the church everywhere he can. Okay? 
And, um, and so, and of course, chapter 9 says that Paul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired letters of Damascus, uh, uh, to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any other way, whether they were women or, men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to earth and heard a voice. So this, now what we have here is, and, and um, Paul wrote, I'm sorry, I did skip the scripture. Later, Paul, referring to the death of Stephen in Acts chapter 22, verse 20, says that, um, and, the, the, and the blood of, the, of thy martyr Stephen was shed, and I was standing by and consenting, unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And so, now, now back to Acts chapter 9. And so now we have uh, his conversion, all right? Paul's conversion on the Damascus Road. Paul <coughs> is, is going out with letters to kill Christians, all right? All right, Paul has, they don't worry about the screen, just look at me for now, until, you know, and don't, don't be under pressure. If they get it, they get it. If they don't, they don't. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, so Paul has letters from the high priest. He has those letters with the, with the authority to bring men and women bound. And those are threatenings and slaughters. They were being killed. Paul was part of the murder bunch. He was an he was, he was anti-Christian murder squad. It was a, under him, it was a Christian holocaust. He, he, was, he was going around killing Christians. Trying to wipe them out before they got started real good. Okay? And so... Um, now, let me give you, and, and I, I did skip over something. I wish we had the slide up there, but that's all right. Um, some historical reference points. Yeah. Uh, are we getting there? There we go. I'm down on historical reference points slide. Whatever we did, just whatever we did we'll write it down. <laughs> you got it back up. You're a little bit far ahead there. Hallelujah. I think another second. Next one down from there is uh, historical reference points. There we go. Here we have. Uh, and the dates, crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, 33 A.D. Uh, the death of, and the reason this, if you want to write this down, this is historically referenced and important for creating the timelines of the genealogies. Uh, the death of King Artus of Syria, 40 A.D. Start of Claudius Caesar's uh, reign as emperor of Rome in 41 A.D. The death of Herod Agrippa I, 44 A.D. And Portrus Fetus succeeds Felix as procur pro procurator of Judea in around 60 A.D. All right. And uh, now, Paul's conversion in the early years. So we go from Acts chapter 8, verse 1, and um, it says, 1 through 3, Saul was consenting unto his death, and at the time there was great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. They were scattered abroad throughout all the regions of Judea and Samaria, ex uh, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, <clears throat> and made great lambdin over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committing them to prison. Wow. Okay. So the next time we hear about Saul again, will be over in Acts chapter 9. Okay. And it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest, desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined a light round about him from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And um, I always call this the Mr. T anointing. Jesus came and met Saul on that road, and he had a choice. Get saved, or you're going to hell now. That was it. This was over. The persecution of the church, Paul, the Lord was coming to stop Saul from what he was doing. And he had a choice. Get saved, or go to hell. It's not, it's not, not a real big option there, you know? Hallelujah. And so Saul, Saul <laughs> uh, who art thou, Lord? He later writes as Paul that if you call, uh, whosoever calls, um, uh, if you confess him as Lord, believe in your heart, God's raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Hallelujah. And uh, it's hot. I'm sorry. The, the heat's just pumping. Lord have mercy. I, I wish we had better signals, you know, like. <laughs> it's hot. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, just take the water go. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. 
So, and he said, and the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said, arise, go into a city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Hallelujah. And the men which uh, journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but not seeing, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by hand and brought him into Damascus. And there were three days without sight, neither did eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, who said to, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise, go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul, of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. <clears throat> now, Ananias answered, Lord, <laughs> let me paraphrase this a little bit. You have got to be kidding. You know? I mean, are you crazy? You know what I'm saying? Lord, I've heard many things of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem, and here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call upon your name. Like the Lord didn't know that. You know, we, we get kind of silly sometimes when we, and when we talk about our communication with the Lord. You know, we kind of go in, you know, now Lord, you know, I don't have any money right now. Uh, like he didn't know that? You know, we go in there and we start talking to the Lord like he doesn't know what's going on. He knows what's going on. Amen. What the Lord's waiting for you to do is respond in faith to his word concerning the circumstance you're in. Amen. Y'all hear how many went home? Hallelujah. All right. But the Lord said unto him, go your way. He's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now let me say this. Whether you have, a, whatever your theological position is on the sufferings of Paul and that kind of thing, um, you know, I've heard people say, I've got Paul's thorn. No, you don't. God, the Lord told him what he was going to have to go through. The Lord said he would show him. Now, we, I, don't, I do not believe, we'll never adhere to the, 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 the thought process or, or position that Paul's thorn was the oriental eye disease where pus was running all out and all this kind of stuff. All right? I, that's just not, I, that's... Anyway, because he, he, wrote with, he wrote with large letters. And that means he had ophthalmalia or whatever. I, I, I never can pronounce that word right. It, huh? Did I get it right the first time? Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, I'm going to show him what great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And then he recounts those at, to the church at Corinth, how he was you know, in the deep and beat and shipwreck and fastings and nakedness and all those things. But understand, the Lord said you're going to have to suffer. And listen, you know what, what he suffered? All those things he suffered for persecution's sake. None of the things he talked about suffering was he suffering just because, you know, uh, the Lord put something on him. The Lord wasn't putting anything on him. He was suffering persecution for being the vessel of the Lord. And he let him know ahead of time, it's going to be a tough road for you. Because they're going to try to kill you. They're going to beat you. I mean, all the things he was going to go through, he, he knew ahead of time he was going to go through it in order to carry out the mission God had for him. Because people were going to turn on him with venom. I tell you, sometimes we ought to take young preachers and tell, you, tell them, especially if they're going to be pastors, they will turn on you with venom. Hello? They'll lie about you, speak evil against you. I mean, you know, backstab you, all kinds of stuff. But you still have a mission to do for God. Amen? And whether one person does that or everybody does that, you've got to obey God and do what God called you to do. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, uh, where are we? Vessel of and Ananias went his way, entered into the house, putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, that appeared unto you in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, we, 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 we um, interpret here or can see here. See, now the Lord didn't tell him to, to get him filled with the Holy Ghost when he appeared to him. So somewhere on the way, the Lord spoke to Ananias and said, and, and he'll get filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. He received the sight forthwith, arose and was baptized. And when he, was received, when he received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he, was the, that he is the Son of God. What was he preaching? All he knew. He didn't have any revelation. All he knew was Jesus was alive. He's the Son of God. That's, his revel that's the extent of his revelation. <coughs> but he's preaching what he's got. Amen. Hallelujah. But all them that heard him were amazed and said, Is this not he that destroyed them which called him this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Paul increased more in strength and comforted the Jews that dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is the very Christ. Okay. And so, um, and after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. Now we have here from um, Galatians 1, if you look at Galatians 1, 17 and 18, we'll hold your place right where you are. Don't leave. Just Galatians 1, 17 and 18. He says, Neither went I up um, into Jerusalem to, to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Then after three years, I went to Jerusalem to see Peter. We, we kind of think that between verse 22 and 23 is about a three-year period. Many days. That's, that's many days. About a thousand. Hallelujah. Okay, and, um, and after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their lying wait was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night, led him down by the wall in the basket. And Saul was come to Jerusalem. He had saved to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him. Now, see, now Barnabas comes to his defense. Amen? See, now Barnabas apparently had, had standing with the church. And so when, when Paul went to Jerusalem, he tried to hang out with everybody. They're thinking, he's a, he's a covert operative. He's here to get it, get, find out who we are and kill us. Yeah. All right? Secret agent man. No secret. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, how he had spoken to them, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem and he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians is that the same bunch that got upset over the widows huh <laughs> same bunch all right so you're gonna have people in your, you're gonna have people just always give, give you trouble apparently it was the Grecians in the early church <laughs> hallelujah you know hallelujah uh, and, and disputed against the Grecians, but they, they went about to slay him. They took out a hit on him. Which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and they were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost was multiplied. Now, we don't see anything else of Paul at this point until we get over to Acts chapter 11. <clears throat> what happens is Paul's in Tarsus. He's hanging out in Tarsus, and he's doing whatever he's doing over there. There's no, there's no account of what's going on in there. But he's in Tarsus. And then, and then, and then about Acts chapter 11, around verse 20, 22, uh, Barnabas leaves to go look for Paul or Saul. Okay? And he goes, he actually says here in verse 25, I believe, of chapter 11, it says he went to Tarsus. And um, on verse 24, it says, On the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited on them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends, and Peter, I'm sorry, I'm in 10, 11, okay? Verse, uh, verse 25 of chapter 11. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that the whole year they were assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch, okay? And so, um, and then we have what we have here is through the rest of this chapter, um, they ministered together. Paul and, and, and Barnabas ministered. Amen? It says here, And they found him, and it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves together with the church and taught much people. And then verse 30, When they did this and sent it by the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. And um, so here we have so Paul at this point, uh, this, and this is the last that we have of him until chapter um, 13. But we have Saul young in ministry. 
He's not, he's not an aged minister at this time as far as, you know. And yeah, we're talking three, four years, about four years down the road or so. All right? He's, he's been, he's zealous. But, you know, he's separated himself. He's been learning. He's been growing. And remember, he, you know, if, you, if you go back even by his own account, he was, he was a Pharisee. He, was, he studied at the feet of Gamela. Gamela, yeah, whatever his name is. Starts with that. I always I just get tongue down some of these words. Hallelujah. He was a doctor of the law. He was, he, he was, a, you know, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. And he gave it in one place. He gave his whole lineage of, of all this stuff. But he, he came to know Jesus. And now he, he has revelation to come in, in, in relationship to all he's been taught by Judaism of the Messiah. Okay? And so he's, um, he's going about his business and teaching and doing the work of God and you know, and then we get to Antioch, but he's hang, they're hanging out in Antioch. That's, that's where the last place that we find Saul. And we get over in the chapter, uh, I'm sorry, verse 25 of chapter 12 says this, But Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with him John, whose name was, surname was Mark. Now where there were at the church at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas, so apparently someone they went to Jerusalem, came back to Antioch. When they got to Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers Barnabas, uh, Barnabas, as Barnabas, Barnabas, Barnabas was the lead prophet and teacher at that time in the church at Antioch. And Simon, which is called Niger, and Lucius, a Cyrene, a Man, Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Saul had come into the place of being a teacher in, in, or a prophet in the Lord, one of the two. Because it says certain prophets and teachers. We don't know which one, he, if he was a prophet or a teacher at that time. But uh, apparently, obviously, at least a teacher. Okay. And as they ministered to the Lord and, 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 and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Now, there's a special calling for them. There's things for them to do. <clears throat> you know, you could be doing things for God, and then God said, Now, I have something for you to do. Okay? Well, we have to obey that. We have to follow God. We have to do that. Amen? When God says do it, we've got to go do it. All right? And, um, and when they had fasted, and listen, God spoke, they fasted some more and prayed. I'll tell you, it'd probably be good for a lot of young ministers if they would just uh, stop. <laughs> Amen? And, and spend some time before the Lord, after God speaks to them, before they run off on, on, on a tangent and get clarity. Amen? And that when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. Okay, so here we have, what is it? Paul, or Saul, still Saul at this time, has been separated to the ministry for a specific purpose. They had hands on them for that purpose. Acts chapter 13, verse 4, begins the first missionary of Paul. All right? This takes place somewhere between. Now, <clears throat> any of these dates I'm going to give you, you can go to about, about four different commentaries, and you'll get a different date. They're all around the same date, but they're... You know, one guy might say it's 44, one, might guy, one guy might say it's 46, one guy says it's 45, and somebody would just get, you know, real sharp and say it's between 44 and 46. They weren't not really sure, okay? And you understand some of the internal evidences we have and some of the historical accounts we have. It's hard to be that specific 2,000 years ago with, with what we do have, okay? Um, I mean, to, to get into the specifics of exact year. We're, we're, we're talking about approximates. And if you're off a year, who cares? Okay? I mean, we'll find out when we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven. Okay? What a day of clarity that will be. All right, anyway. So somewhere around the time of 46 A.D., Paul begins his first missionary journey. Somewhere in that 44, 46. Now, Paul got saved. I, I don't know if I told you that. There's around uh, when the, the Damascus Road experience took place was around 37 A.D. So this is about nine years later before he starts off, you know. Like I said, we need to, we need to settle down. Amen? Okay? And, and it ends sometime before 50 A.D. A lot, most people have it between 46 and 48. Took place, uh, started in 46, ended around 48 A.D., his first missionary journey. Now, if you'll go ahead to the next slide, Belinda, although I haven't, haven't finished all the information on that previous one. The missionary journeys of Paul, um, we start on the first missionary journey. This, this is just a, a chart. It has the three different missionary journeys on it, hallelujah, and some different things. But on this first missionary journey, we find in Acts 13 and 14 covers that first journey. And he passed through Seleucia, Seleucia then to Cyprus, Salamis, Paphos, 
Pergia, Pergia, Perga, Antioch and, and Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, Derby, and then he retracts backwards, um, and, and Italia, uh, and returned to Antioch in Syria. Barnabas was on, with him on this trip. Um, Mark joins them, leaves him at Perga. Mark leaves him at Perga. Can y'all see that? Can y'all read those? Or are they too small? Okay, see that top thing? I'm, going, I'm, I'm following that chart. It goes around like this. It goes here, down, and back around that, that very top two tier up there. It says first missionary journey. Then right under it, it says second missionary journey. And then we come down here in the third missionary journey, okay? Um, I'm sorry that I, I didn't. I, I don't know if we can make that. We can't make that any bigger on the PowerPoint, can we? All right. Hallelujah. Maybe I want to get seats right here on the front rows by, <laughs> right under the screens. I couldn't, make any, I couldn't get it any bigger because it's ta I've taken up the whole, full, whole slide with it. That's as big as I could get it. Um, I got this out of an old, old study Bible that I had. And so um, if, if you go ahead to the next slide, let's go ahead to the next slide. Hallelujah. We have a map, Paul's first and second journeys. The, uh, the black line, the darker line, is his first journey. And they starts at, obviously, Antioch, sells to uh, Atalia and Perga and, and, and does that loop there. Um, up through Derby, and then, you know, uh, back around, hallelujah. Oh, actually, he starts Salamis, Paphos, uh, I tell you, and then he loops, and then he loops back and comes back to Antioch, okay? That's his first journey. Now, like I said, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of between 44 and 46, he starts, ends around 48 A.D., okay? Now, at this time, Paul still has not written a letter. He's still not writing to the church that we have any record of. He's, he's still, he's ministry. He's doing things and, um, you know, growing in the Lord. He's on this trip with Barnabas. Mark starts out with them. Mark leaves. We find out later that, that, that's, that, was, a, that was a relationship uh, breaker. You know, Mark's, Mark's leaving the ministry and going doing his own thing. Hallelujah. Let's back up, uh, back up to the, the Paul's missionary journeys. And so we have chapters 13 and 14 cover of the book of Acts, cover, you know, Paul's ministry. We have him, you know, um, you know, the miracle of raising the infinite man, from, you know, uh, up, who had never walked over in Acts chapter 14. So all these things between Acts 13 and 14 take place on that first missionary trip. He's out ministering, you know, um, preaching the gospel. Uh, he, we have Elimias the sorcerer. <coughs> the blindness came on him. Y'all want to read? We'll just, we'll just read what happened on the trip. How about that? Verse 4, Acts 13. I was going to try to get through I, I need to slow down. I, I think I want to get all this stuff. I, I, I got the first Thessalonians I'm trying to get to because that's the first letter. Let's just cover it all. All right? We got a whole year. If we take a whole year, if it takes the whole year, we'll just take the whole year. And at Christmas, we'll say, "Whoa, we learned about Paul. Boy, did we learn about Paul. All right. So verse 4 of Acts 13, So they being, filled, they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and went from thence, they sailed to Cyprus. And when they, and, and when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their, <coughs> um, to their, see it helps to look at that map. Put that map up while we're talking about this, Belinda. Please. There you go. So the black line is the, is the first missionary journey. Um, hallelujah. And so they, they sailed. They were at, uh, they departed this to Cyprus, and then, you know, which there's an island, the island, there's an island of Cyprus, and some, uh, Solomon, they preached the word of God, hallelujah, and they had John to the ministry, and when they had gone through the, through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain source, that's on the other side, that's uh, the far side of the island, hallelujah, can you see that? So, here's Cyprus right here, it's right down here, and the first city they came to was Solomon, and they, then they went over to Paphos, and when they got to Paphos, uh, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. And it was with the deputy of that country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimaeus, El Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, this is where his name is changed. He goes from Saul to Paul. In, in scripture record, apparently he was, he was called that before, he was also called Paul. But uh, this is the account we have of where the scripture, and from this point on, on, you will never hear him referred to as Saul. Yeah, he's referred to as Paul from here on, all right? And um, 
filled with the Holy Ghost, set eyes on him, and said, O full of the subtlety and mischief, thou child of the devil, the enemy of all unrighteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Oh, we just got to walk in love with people. And if we'll just walk in love, they'll serve the Lord. See, the devil uses, let me tell you something, the devil uses misapplication of scriptures and teaching on love to, to limit Christians from walking in their authority as a, as a believer. Now, Paul, come on now. He should just stop and put his arms around and say, man, I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. You may be going to hell, but that's something I'll never tell because I love you with the love of the Lord. Ooh, rah. All right. And now behold, the hand of the Lord's upon thee. You'll be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. <coughs> and he went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed. Well, I'll tell you, if the church walked in the authority and the power we should walk in, we'd see more people getting saved. That's why the devil wants to misdirect us with false approaches to certain things in the Bible. Hello? Man, Paul brought judgment on that guy, and the man got, the other guy got saved. And he, he was a politician, that's right. <laughs> Whoa, what a miracle! Hallelujah. <laughs> now, when Paul had his company had loose from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia. Now, that means they left here. They left the island of Crete, or Cyprus, I'm sorry. And, and they came up to Perga, which is next to Attilia, and in the uh, Pamphylia region there. So you see, they, they left here, Paphos, and sailed across there to there. And that's where they, that's where they landed and got out. Hallelujah. And... Um, And John, that would be Mark, departed from them, returning to Jerusalem. So in other words, at Paphos, he just, I'm going back. I'm going back to Jerusalem. He took off. All right? And when they, but when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. So now they've moved, you know, moved inland a little bit, uh, hallelujah, to, where they go to? Uh, Antioch, which is up here in the middle, kind of up here in the middle in the mountainous region there. You see, they went up to Antioch. And Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, You men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. And Paul stood up, beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, ye that fear God, give audience. The, the, the God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt at Jerusalem in the land, dwelt the strangers in the land of Egypt, and with a high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of 40 years suffered their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of uh, Canaan, uh, he divided the land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years unto Samuel the prophet. And afterward, he desired a king. They desired a king. And God gave them unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, about the space of 40 years. And when he removed him, sorry, <coughs> Uh, and when he removed him, he raised up them unto them David to be their king, to whom he also gave his testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, um, which shall fulfill my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised up is, uh, unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, he that cometh one after me, whose shoes of the feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, stock, uh, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is, this, is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet they desired, uh, desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree, laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. 
And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he has raised up Jesus again, as it is written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And concerning that he raised him from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in the second psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was laid with, unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom the Lord raised saw no corruption. And Paul's preaching a sermon here about Jesus. They ask him in the synagogue, say something. <laughs> Woo, that's all it took. <laughs> Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that though this man has preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Be therefore, uh, beware therefore, lest that, that come upon you which is spoken of all the prophets. Behold ye despisers. And this is, what he, this is what the prophets are saying. Behold ye despisers and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe. Though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles sought, besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, they, they got a hold of us. Hey, there's something being preached over there at the Jewish synagogue. And it sounds good to me. Uh, and that now, when the congregation was broke up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed, Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city came, almost the whole city together. Boy, he goes there and preaches one sermon about Jesus being the Son of God, Jesus being the salvation, Jesus being resurrected from the dead. The Jews heard it. Gentiles got a hold of it. Next, next Sabbath day, everybody shows up. Doesn't matter who they are. They're all there. The, almost the whole city. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. <coughs> there are so many people full of envy. Hello. They, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, we love you. Why are you saying, listen, folks, we have got to understand that there is an authority we speak by that has the power to destroy yokes and remove burdens, and we can't be all syrupy. Hello? It was necessary for the word of God. Listen to this. This is a rebuke. It was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of the everlasting God, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So here um, at Antioch, I believe they're at Antioch. Are they at Antioch? I don't think they left. Hello. You're in Antioch. Okay. Here at Antioch, the Gentile church basically is born. Now, up until now, the church had basically been a Jewish church. Jesus died and was resurrected in 33. This is Paul's first missionary journey, about 46 or so. This, so this is probably early on in that. So at least 13 years or so later, after Jesus had been raised from the dead, the, the Gentiles, uh, they turned to the Gentiles for the first full time. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldst be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad. <laughs> hey, woo, glory. Jews had a hold up, and now we get to get in on the deal. Ah, praise God. Hallelujah. And glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook the dust off their feet against them and came into Iconium. And so Iconium, uh, I'm trying to see what that is on the map. Lower, oh, it's, the next, it's really the next town uh, on, on the journey there. They came to Iconium and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. And when it came to pass to Iconium, they went before, together. Did y'all see where Iconium is? Okay, you got, you got Antioch up here. We're up here in this, this, this um, over here. Here we are. They, they, went to, they came in, got to Antioch up here, and they circled over to Iconium, okay, 
right over here. I, I wish I had a longer pointer or something. I could I'd point with it. Um, this one is times kind of wish you had a center screen with a, you know, big big TV in the middle or something. Glory. And it came to pass Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake their great multitude of Jews and also of Greeks believed. Well, what are Greeks? Gentiles. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Now, they, they don't even want that. They, they're just so mad about him, they want to make sure that the Gentiles don't mess with it. Hello. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the words of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by the hands. So they get, to, they get to Iconium, and now they've got signs and wonders and miracles taking place here, confirming the Lord. Amen. Um, but the multitude of the city was divided, part held with the Jews, part held with the apostles. But when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Lysonia, and unto the region that lieth whereabout, thereabout. So they went down the road a little bit over to, to uh, Lystra and Derby. Hallelujah. And um, there they preached the gospel. This isn't something new. But it says, and there was a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This is this first man. You go on your first bishop's journey. You've got signs, wonders, miracles. I mean, all taking place. Praise God. Amen. What an exciting journey. People don't even know who you are yet. I mean, there's, there's rumors about the guy who used to persecute us. But, I mean, they, we don't have television. He's not modeled. He didn't have one of his power tie. I'm sorry. He didn't have one of his power robe. Amen. With his modern, you know, metro sandals. All right. There sat a certain man at Lystra, at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak. What was Paul speaking? The gospel. Amen. Who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up. Well, how did he get faith to be healed? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Paul had to preach that Jesus healed. Amen. If Paul was, was preaching, you know, uh, that you're, you're going to just you know, have a wonderful life and be victorious. And if faith to be healed came because Paul had to have been preaching on healing, involved in the gospel. It's part of the gospel. The same heard Paul speak and steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed. What's that? Perception by the Holy Ghost. There's an unction in his spirit, a voice of the spirit. Let him know this guy's got faith to be healed. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. When the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lysonia, the gods are come down to us in likeness of men. <laughs> oh, yeah. They called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, boy, you got, now, now you got the false god people upset. They call him Barnabas, J Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius. And now you got the priest of, of, Merc of, of, Bar of uh, Jupiter coming out. Which spoke before the city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. So he thought, man, I'm telling you what, people get mixed up. Can they get mixed up or not? Now they're going to sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas because they think they're gods. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard it, they rent, rent their clothes, ran in among the people, crying out, Sirs, what do, why do you these things? We are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is therein, who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without a witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these things scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And they came hither certain, there came hither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. Now, what happened? All the troublemakers are showing up. They go, they, uh, they, he got over there to, to Iconium and um, or where, where did he get to? He got, got over to Lystra and Derby. We're going to get a group go over there and mess them up over there. Because they're, they're messing with our belief system. And persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city supposing that he had been dead. Hmm. How be it? As the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas and the Derby. Now, Paul writes in, in, uh, uh, to the church, he says this, he said, I knew a man about 13 years ago, 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. 
Such a one was called up into the third heaven and heard things unlawful to, uh, uh, to be spoken. Now, most scholars would believe that what happened here is Paul was dead. Paul, they stoned Paul to death. He was called up into heaven, then God sent him back. Which is, the things unlawful to be uttered or that he spoken, he heard things. Well, I, I believe and, 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 um, that it was the revelation of who we are in Christ, our authority in Christ, what took place in the, what takes place in the believer in Christ. Hallelujah. And he was sent back. And then he'll spend the rest of his life writing that revelation out. He hasn't written a letter yet. No letters have been written yet. He's stoned, left for dead. Caught, he gets called up into the third heaven. Hurt, hears and, and, and hears the unlo things unlawful to be uttered. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so they, they left there and went, they went over to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel in that city and taught many, they returned from, again, to Lystra, to Iconium, to Antioch. He starts going back to where he came out of. Like, there's, still, there's still disciples there. Amen. Hallelujah. So he, just, he backtracks a little bit there. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Now, he didn't quite, see, he wasn't too far from his hometown at that point. When he was at Derby, they didn't go there. Hallelujah. And they returned to Lystra, Iconium, uh, and uh, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith. And they, mu they must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they, now listen, tribulation. Tribulation means you're going to be, is persecution, attacks of the enemy. I mean, you're, you're going to face stuff. And you understand, the early church, the early Jews, faced some stuff. They were, they were written off, lost their lands, lost their dowries, lost their inheritance, lost everything. And, were, and some even buried, had funerals and buried a casket because their, their, their child was dead. Their family loved one was dead to them. Glory. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Now, whether they ordained elders. At this time, now, see, this is, you know, we, we get terminologies sometimes. In the early church, they put older people in charge, ordained them. Why? Because they're smarter than dumb young people. Just in the natural, they got more sense. Hello? You know, they ordained elders, older people. And the reason was, you don't take young whippersnappers and put them in charge of stuff. There's a wisdom that comes with age. Amen. That you need. We get a lot of young people get saved and they're just dumb with their salvation. They think they got a, they got a new, you know, gadget from Star Wars or something. And they run out and do stupid stuff. Well, that's why, older, that's why they use older people. Um, Later, it, be, it becomes more important as they grow, the church grows, ministry gifts begin to take over. Okay? Hallelujah. And they commended them to the Lord whom they believed. And when they passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. And thence they sailed to, Ant uh, they sailed to Antioch. Hallelujah. from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they were fulfilled. Now, this is a different Antioch, okay? This is not the same Antioch that he was, because the other Antioch is inland, okay? Notice up here, there's the Antioch that he, was, he had preached in, and they had people come from Antioch and Iconium down to Lystra and Derby to persecute them. When he got back to, I'll tell you, he sailed over to this Antioch. There's more than one city named with the same name. We do that here in America. There are 33 Greenvilles in America. Did you know that? 33 states have a Greenville. All right? So he sailed back to this Antioch. That's where he ended his missionary journey. This is where his first missionary journey ends. All right? Hallelujah. And uh, this is in verse 23. When they preached the word in Perga, they went back down to Antioch. And they, I mean, I tell you. And they sailed to Antioch from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work where they had fulfilled. So remember that the church of Antioch separated them. And when they were come, they gathered the church together and rehearsed all that God had done with them. They'd be gone for a couple of years. They'd come back and start sharing all the stuff that happened. We had people, I mean, we had miracles, signs and wonders. I mean, lame people were made whole. God was, was doing all kinds of stuff. We had, you know, the power of God come on somebody who was resisting us and made him blind. And the guy got, the, his, the guy he was trying to keep out of the gospel got saved. Amen? <clears throat> and, opened the, and, and then they said, and he opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And they, and they there abode long time with the disciples. And so now they're back. Okay? 
And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised. Now, we have here in starting in chapter 14, um, <laughs> trouble in the church. Are you here? Yep, they come down, they want to start bringing thought that the Judaizers showed up. All right, let's back up if we will. Okay, because really that, that kind of, that ends Paul's first missionary journey. And, you know, then there's some things happening in Jerusalem and um, so forth and so on. Then we get over to about 36 of chapter, oh, four, th th where we left off in 14 then through 15 down to about chapter 30, verse 36. And after some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. Or Mark left them where? He left them at Paphos. Okay? He, he, he was on that first three or four month part of the trip. They went out another year and a half or so, and he, went, he had gone back. He didn't want to go. He, he, he took off. He wimped out. Okay? Anybody enjoying this? Is it, is it too much information too fast, or is it, is it good? All right. So in chapter 15, <coughs> um, Paul and Barnabas, verse 35, continue teaching again, and not teaching and preaching the word of the Lord. So they've gone back to the home church. They've rehearsed all this, and they stay there, and they, they're teaching, and they're ministering, and they're doing things. And so there's a couple of year uh, uh, span in here. While they're back, uh, uh, a year to a two-year span, they're back in Antioch preaching at the home church, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you something. It's good to go back to your home church. It's good to be with people like precious faith. It's good to be with people who are, you know, walking with the Lord. Can you say amen? And, and here uh, <coughs> is a place they can strengthen the brother. They can get refreshed. Amen. And, um, and some days after Paul said in the Barnabas, they've been there for, you know, uh, some time teaching. Let us go again and visit the cities where we preach and the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas wanted to take John with him, whose surname was Martin. Paul thought it not good to take him, who departed from them at Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And contention was so sharp between them that they departed the Sunday one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria to Sicilia confirming the brethren. Let me say something here. You never hear the name Barnabas again. That's it. Barnabas, now he, he was, from what we can see, the chief apostle. He's the one, <coughs> he's the one that, that gave Paul and, and, and stood by Paul and argued for him. So you can, still, you can still miss God. Amen? Now, you could go a couple of different ways. You could say, well, the reason that you don't hear more about, about Barnabas was because this was about Paul, Paul's journeys and stuff, with not about Barnabas. And um, that may be, that may, it could be weak. You could probably go, you could probably try to make that work. I'm not sure if you could, but <laughs> anyway, we never hear the name Barnabas again. That's it, okay? And so now it becomes Paul and Silas. All right, now starts this next missionary journey, and this is a big one. Now, you, when you look at relate, the relationship between the two missionaries, ooh, it's a, it's a, we're not going to get into the second missionary journey tonight, all right? Look at how small the first missionary journey was, and then the green line, is they tra and they traveled inland, and, and, and basically until they get to Troas, so they go across to ne Neapolis, um, and then they sail back from Corinth, up to, up, but... Look at how this starts. It goes inland, around, all the way over to Troas, up into Annapolis, Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, uh, down to Athens, over to Corinth, back over to Ephesus, and back to Caesarea, to Jerusalem. That's probably, it looks like it might be three times or so bigger or longer of a journey <clears throat> that they took to go preach the gospel. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. All right. Now, um, we're going to have to pick up here next week because I, I can't. Like I said, it's a lot of information. But I, I'm, I hope we're giving you enough historical background to what's going on here that you can see some of the cool stuff. You see any cool stuff? Okay. So Paul ends his journey about 48, 49 A.D. on the first missionary. Uh, in about the spring of 51, so a year and a half to two years later, he takes off again. Okay. And that journey ends <clears throat> about three years later, maybe the winter or, or uh, 53 or the, the uh, 
53, 54, so maybe very late 53 or early in 54, and he had left in the spring of 51 around. So we're talking about almost a three-year journey this time, okay? Has anybody got food cooking somewhere? Jesus, take the wheel. Hallelujah. So, uh, on, this, on this first missionary journey, we, we, we passed through the birthplace of Barnabas in Cyprus, or I mean, in Seleucia. Uh, Mark's with them. We have the, pro, uh, the conversion of the proconsul. Mark leaves them. Uh, the first Gentile congregations in Antioch. Many believed in Iconium. They're regarded as gods in Lystra, and, and then he's stoned there. He has great success in Derby. Then he revisits several other cities and appoints elders. And then from Italia, then returns to Antioch in, in Syria. So the Syrian Antioch, Antioch, Syria. That was Paul and Barnabas, marked partially on the trip, the very front, very front end of that trip. Okay? Now, the reason that, you know, what we're going to do is when we get, when we get into this next one, as we get into where the, some of the, especially when we have specificity of when the epistles were written and where he was, what we're going to do is we're going to stop and we're going to go through those epistles. Okay? Um, so on, this, on next Wednesday night, we probably will get started in First Thessalonians because Paul starts the church in Thessalonica. He, is, is his, um, apparently, maybe his first church plant, he has, but he has to leave because of persecution. He ends up from Thessalonica over in... Um, great, I'm going to use it next week. Okay, he ends up... Uh, moving down from Thessalonica, and he ends up in Corinth, and that's where he writes his letter to the church of Thessalonica. 